Warning. You've reached on the box with great comfort and are now in a biblical truth zone. Place all questions about theology, current events, and evangelism on the box where they'll be weighed against the truth of God's Word. Ready your hearts and minds. You're about to be inspired and equipped to fulfill the Great Commission. Programming to engage in five, four, three, two, one. Friends, you're not seeing a hologram. You're not hallucinating. We're back. And here's the interesting thing. We are one week older than last week and one week younger than next week. So, Ray, we're perpetually older and younger as we move through life. That encourages me. <laughs> Pathetically. <laughs> Perpetually. you got to have something to look forward <laughs> yeah, to when you get great. older. Yeah, that's true. And you know what? We are a little bit sadder, though, because our good friend Alan Atsby, who's the floor manager here and who's a producer of On the Box with Their Comfort, is not here with us. He's home ill, so please pray for him. And we miss them. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we really do. We've got a lot to cover today, and we're going to be talking about the weekend. Some good things happened, right, Ray? Wonderful don't say things. too much. No, but one of the things happened, but what, we've got a big subject to, to do. do, and I, I don't I don't want to take a gamble with this, so make sure we, <laughs> make sure we cover yeah, it. No, okay. Where's my rim shot? Yeah. i got to have that Andy. No, 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 don't. Anyhow, we will talk about the weekend and what happened. Uh, we got Mark Spence sitting at the dean's desk. He's got a lot to share as well. But before we do all of that, we're going to jump into the topic of the day. And here is the question that we're going to be dealing with. Is gambling a sin? What does the Bible say about gambling? Ray, have you noticed more and more as you're flipping through the channels that there's a lot more on TV doing Who with gambling? Who says I flip through the channels? Do you? Yes, okay, I do. see? <laughs> I saw guilt written all yeah. over your face. Yeah, well, as I do flip through the channels, I can't help it. Uh, Channel surfing is about as much fun as watching a program, uh, actually. Yeah. I just love it. So, uh, but, what was but, the question? Uh, my question is, have you seen... Uh, a, just kind of a new phenomenon with gambling. Oh, yes, I've seen a new name for gambling. It's called gaming. <laughs> it's not gambling, That's it's right. gaming. It's like adultery is not adultery, it's having an affair. Lying is not lying, it's white lies and fibs and half-truths. Right. So uh, man has always tried to soften sin, uh, yeah. but it doesn't work. Changing the crime's name doesn't change the crime. Right. What about you, Mark? Do you, have you seen a, kind of a new trend going on with that now? Oh boy, it seems like every primetime spot on uh, a sports channel of some sort is covering poker. Oh yeah, it's a right? sport now. It I is. forgot. <laughs> it's a sport. Right. How do you remain fit? <laughs> well, I poker. I gamble with my sunglasses <laughs> on. Well, here's the thing, folks. Obviously, those of you watching, uh, if you ever turn television on, you know that uh, gambling is really at the forefront now of our culture. I mm. mean, seriously, it used to, used to be viewed in a certain way, but you're right, Ray, it's become a little more palatable. Uh, we see, we culturally see, acceptable. Yeah, a number of channels. Sometimes I'll be flipping around, and a number of channels mm. have uh, you know, gambling shows going on. I think a guy that I went to high school with, actually, uh, is a well-known gambler in that arena now. How's he doing? Um, I don't know. <laughs> he hasn't sent me any money, <laughs> so probably not good. Not that he'd send it to me anyway. But anyhow, um, it, it is more at the <laughs> forefront, and Christians do have questions about it. Mm. I mean, they're seeing it more often. It seems to be more acceptable than it was at least years ago. And so we're faced with that question. Well, in answer to that question, in part, what does the Bible have to say about gambling? Well, it has absolutely nothing to say about gambling specifically. All right, Ray, have you ever seen a verse in Scripture on gambling? I well, mean, specifically? I did see one in the book of Acts you where did. the disciples drew straws. <laughs> <laughs> they cast lots for Christ's yeah. benefit, folks. It's Let's, we're just going to close down the program for the moment. All right. <laughs> but no, uh, there, are, there are no... Uh, you know, scriptures That's that deal right. specifically There's with nothing it. nothing that means Las Vegas or right. casinos. And, and maybe because that wasn't a, an issue in the culture of that time, different mm. people have different views on that. But uh, the Romans used to gamble. Oh, yes. At the foot of the cross. Right. They tossed dice. You're right. Mm. But as far as it being as pervasive as it is today, that probably wasn't an issue. Right. Uh, but um, there are biblical principles that deal with things that are connected with gambling, one of them being the love of money. Um, another thing being greed. Here are a couple of verses. First Just before you read those verses, I, I cannot believe how that scripture is so taken out of context so often. So many people, you get on television, you get we witness to people, money is the root of all evil. It's absolutely nothing right. to do with money. It's like we say we've got a terrible drug problem in America. No, we don't. We've got a people problem that right. abuse you know, drugs. Right. We don't have a litter problem in America. We have people that drop <laughs> litter, and we don't have a gambling problem. We have greedy people that gamble. Right. And the money is not the root of all 
all evil. It's passive. It's the love of money. It's greed. Yeah. It's the root of all evil. Right. Well put. It's so, called pass the buck. Yeah. So here, here's here's a couple of verses, like I said, that deal that with it. That was actually witty. Oh, is that funny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Laugh. <laughs> okay. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That's 1 Timothy 6.10. And then you have Hebrews 13.5. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. So those, those are things that are typically associated with gambling, uh, the love of money, the, the pursuit of riches. Mm. And people often get themselves in trouble with and it. It's such a, sec- uh, a false sense of security of money. Uh, scripture says uh, money has, riches has wings. And it certainly right. does. We've seen that in recent years that, millionaires uh, had their money fly off overnight right. with, a, with a crash. Mark, do you have something to say? You know, I think of the allure of getting rich quick, you know, in today's society, especially in light of our economical downturn and turmoil that a lot of people are in, it is really real, you know, to a lot of people. So when right. you have these Vegas lights, you know, popping out at the play, all over the place, and hey, if I throw down $50, I can easily and quickly turn that into $500, well, you have people taking their chances, you know, throwing down money. But it's not just that easy to get rid of $50, but you can also lose your house. Right. A second mortgage is easily accessible when you are at the casinos. They will do whatever it takes to try to get your money away from you. We also have to bear in mind that when you go to these casinos, that usually alcohol is a big part of it. Right. If they're not discounted at a great rate, you can even perhaps get alcohol for free, especially when you begin to win. And as you begin to win, they begin to throw perks your way. They throw shows your way. They throw free hotel rooms your way. Why? Because they begin to glamorize this whole thing, and they will continually feed you with what you need and want while you are giving them your money. Right. So we, do, we need to be careful with that. And I know easy... Uh, I, I, I presume you're going to touch upon the whole aspect of uh, gambling. You know, is it a sin specifically? Right. But I think that there is a danger, yeah. specifically with gambling. When people begin to leave their family and investing into their kids and in their wives to go be with the boys for that Saturday night six-hour gambling tournament, that uh, hoping that they're going to bring some money home. Yeah. There is a fine line. That tightrope of a line that we need to walk and be careful with when it comes to gambling. You think of the lottery, for example. Hmm. Lottery is a way, and it's at least glamorized to be one with where we can uh, build up our education system because a percentile of that money that is given is given over to the public school system and things like that. Right. And the people that are gambling in this capacity are usually those who need the money the most, and they are trying to get that rich, quick idea brought forth. You know, I was just seeing inside the news today, not even really knowing what today's show is going to be about, how a family hit the lotto, this married couple hit the lotto for the second time. Hmm. You know, they became millionaires once, and now they're becoming millionaires again. So uh, we, we need to be careful with that whole idea, and that's really my point. Yeah. Uh, this get rich quickly idea. Yeah, so. you can bet on that, Mark. Um, <laughs> We need canned Can laughter. you ever pass up a pun, Ray? No, never pass up a pun. <laughs> Always pick a pun. That's funny. <laughs> Powerful people pick puns. Um, uh. You know, Mark, it's so true. Um, when I was in Australia with Sue uh, back in 1850, it was a long time. I was 20 years old, and uh, my uncle, when I was 20 years old, took me and Sue to a gambling casino in Australia, in Sydney, Australia. And they had the one armed bandits there, you know, before the push button things that we've seen in Las Vegas. See, uh, oh, tell you something. You see those Good. in airports now. Yeah, it's just amazing. Um, I'll have them in hospital soon. <laughs> People are <laughs> dying by the be beard. Uh, but um, I felt the power of uh, covetousness in my hand. I had a handful of 20 cent pieces, and I just go, pum, 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 and thinking I was going to strike it. And it was such a good feeling. Wow. Just the power you feel that in doing that. Anticipation, each Anticipation, yeah. excitement. But, you know, I think Christians could take Las Vegas down. They make a big gamble that will go there, eat their cheap food, and gamble. But Christians go there and eat their cheap food. <laughs> 
<laughs> we don't gamble. So Christians invade Las Vegas, give out money tracks at the casinos. They go down like hotcakes on a cold day in Alaska and eat all their food and come home. <laughs> and it'll take Las Vegas down and we'll stop all this There's gambling. There's the formula so. to bust Vegas, friends. That's Go it. and eat their cheap food. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be hearing yeah. from some Las Vegas attorneys, right? I have mm -hmm. no doubt. Well, we'll have a meal with them when we go but, over. But, you know, we have, some, we have some fond memories of Vegas, and we're going to see a video in a little bit. Oh, but we are? Spider? I think that was his oh, name. Oh, yeah. Honestly. What did he say? I every day I lose, every day I win. <laughs> <laughs> this interview is over. Are we going to see that? Uh, I don't know if we're going to see him. Did we see the gun thing? Are we going to uh, show that? We are. We're going to see oh, that. Oh, I yeah. love that. So, but, but, you know, um, boy, so much of, of uh, w what's happening today in a lot of homes is connected to gambling. You know, when they you know? run the cameras over the crowds waiting to spend their money, there's a lot of poor people standing there. You right. know, it's not the rich and, and big limos that are there to bet. Poor people giving their hard-earned money or their government-earned money, their Social Security <laughs> money, to gamble, and it's such a terrible waste. Uh, Vegas and casinos are rich-looking because they're reaping the benefits of right. the gullib gullibility of, of poor people, and it's tragic. That's true. You know, uh, Al Mohler, whom we all uh, very much respect. Al, Al <laughs> Mohler has great wisdom teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you had to do that joke, <laughs> didn't you? Did. Uh, Al Mohler is someone, obviously, who we all respect, and he, he really... Uh, He's got it out for gambling. Let, let, me, uh, let me read to you something that he wrote in an article called When the Accounts Are Called, A Christian Understanding of Gambling. He said, according to some estimates, as much as one-third of the nation's money supply now moves through the gambling industry each year. One-third. That's huge. Wow. That's massive. He says, Eugene M. Christensen determined that Americans spent more on gambling than they did on health, insurance, dentists, shoes, foreign travel, or household appliances. Wow. I mean, I, I had no idea. I knew gambling was bad, but when I saw those figures, it was like, wow. The statistics are probably higher when you take the church, those who aren't covetous, out, I mean, genuine Christians, out of that equation, then the statistics become even higher. Wow, that's a good point. Then he says, the Bible is clear on this issue. The entire enterprise of gambling is opposed to the moral worldview revealed in God's word. The basic impulse behind gambling is greed, a basic sin that is the father of many other evils. Greed, covetousness, and avarice are repeatedly addressed by scripture, always presented as a sin against God and often accompanied by a graphic warning of the destruction, which is greed's result. The burning desire for earthly riches leads to frustration and spiritual death. So that's, that's some heavy stuff. You know, I mean, he's, he's not mincing any words on it. And then again, a couple more things. He says, the Bible presents a stewardship of material possessions as a crucial issue of discipleship. The Christian understands that his possessions and money are not his own, but God's. We are trustees who will be judged for the quality of our stewardship. Those lottery tickets and trips to Atlantic City are going to be hard to explain when God calls stewards to account. And so... You know, that's, that's some heavy stuff. And I know that some of you watching are getting a sense of, well, wait a minute. You know, is this borderline legalism? Is Al Mohler laying down the gauntlet and saying gambling is sin? Mm. And, you know, one of the things that we always try to be careful of is labeling things sin that Scripture doesn't specifically speak about. Right. You know, and we did the same with alcohol. We were very clear on that, that Scripture does not condemn alcohol. We got a little bit of flack for that. We did, mm -hmm. but we were honest. We yeah. presented both sides. We said we don't do it. We don't advise it. We don't recommend it. But at the same time, we can't call it sin. Right. And Christians have liberty in that regard as long as they're not getting drunk and as long as they're concerned about other believers. And I think in regards to gambling, again, it's something that we can't point to in Scripture and say Scripture says it's sin. But on the other hand, you know, you got to be wise and you got to be cautious with it. You know, we were talking about this earlier as an example. Uh, someone might say, hey, you know what? Uh, I love going skiing. And then I may answer and say, well, when you go skiing, how much do you spend when you go skiing every winter? Oh, well, uh, maybe 150 bucks when you add up all the food and the, the, the lift tickets and the gas and the, man, 150 bucks a trip. I go maybe three, four, five times a year. Well, someone can respond to that and say, okay, well, I sometimes get together with friends. And they just do it for pleasure. Right, in the yeah. privacy of our home. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy, the, I enjoy the, the, the game. I enjoy the camaraderie that's a part of it. I limit myself to $50. And as opposed to you who are not going to get one penny back from your ski trip, I may get some money back in return for the $50 that I'm spending. So they see it as, as in essence, spending money on recreation, mm -hmm. being cautious with it, and being disciplined. Well, it comes back to the heart, doesn't it? It's, right. it's covetousness that, or covetousness that's the crime. It's not the gambling. That's the branch, the root. 
yeah. is the covetous heart. So right. if you go into something like this, I'm going to make money from my neighbors, then that becomes uh, greed. Right. It's that greed. It's that covetousness. You enter into those, you've entered into sin. There is the other aspect as well of stumbling others. You've got to be careful of that. And, uh, and there's also the element of the environment and your past struggles. Is this something you struggled with as a Christian in the past? Is it stumbling to you? Is this something that God is forbidding you to do personally? So we put this out before you guys and ask you to make the choice and ask you to be discerning on an issue that's really uh, important. You know, people sometimes will point out the stock market, <laughs> right? Yeah. Think of how many people lost millions and totally, you know, in totality, billions. They the gambled. Market. Yeah, and some and would say, lost. well, that's gambling. You know, you're putting your money on something. You might make more, you might not, you know, and they apply it to other parts of business as well. But the whole issue is having integrity in your convictions and in your conscience and uh, honoring the Lord and asking yourself, is this something I can honor God in? None of us here gamble, uh, but the question is, is uh, where do you stand before the Lord? Mark, I got a scenario for both of you. Oh, okay. Um, your Aunt Martha calls. She says, easy, Mark, uh, I've, I'm sending you a check for $50,000. <laughs> and you go, well, thank you so much. She says, oh, just my pleasure. I love you guys so much. I want to bless your children. I got it at Vegas. <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, uh, that, you're uh, going to cross that bridge when you come yeah, to it. Yeah, I'd have to figure that <laughs> out, you know. I mean, but, you know, you think about it because sometimes people will say, well, where are you spending your money? And uh, how much control do we have over that? I go mm. to the store. I buy a certain product. Who knows what, you know, the owner of that store is going right. to do with that money and so on and so forth. But Scripture speaks about having knowledge in, in terms of meat sacrifice to idols. And if you, you have should have said, oh, Martha, just don't tell me where you got <laughs> yeah, it. Don't tell me, Aunt Martha. <laughs> well, Mark, what about you? Uh, you know, I heard you uh, many times, Ray, say, if, uh, excuse me, Pastor, if somebody drops a lottery ticket inside the plate, would you um, receive that? Take it as from the Lord. What do you do with that? <laughs> right? Here's a $20 million winnings. Right. Oh. You know, we just say, well, Satan's had that money long enough, and I'm going <laughs> to now use it, right? You know, I mean, that, that obviously is a hard one. You know, I, and I do like what Easy was saying here. Boy, there's some sound wisdom in you over the years as I've hung out with you, Easy. You know, it, it really is a matter of the heart, isn't it? Well, yeah. what, what is your whole point? What is the motive? Why are you doing what you're doing? Are you trying to hang out with some friends, just having a good time? Can you afford to lose that sort of money? Well, then it all becomes kind of subjective. I remember Michael Jordan was inside the news a while back because he was dropping twenty, fifty thousand dollars 50000 oh, dollars gambling. Wow. People are saying, how could you bet $50,000? Well, when you realize that guy is worth half a billion dollars, <laughs> that's actually less money in comparison to a candy bar, what perhaps you and I would pay for. So that's $500 million. I like that sounding better than Five. half a billion. <laughs> you lose your sense of, don't you? Like we're, in, we're in debt trillions of dollars. Oh, yeah, trillions. Right. Yeah, so much. And, you know, let me say this real quick before we move on. You know, a lot of people have this illusion that winning the lottery, as an example, because that's another form of gambling, mm. right? I mean, people are paying money hoping to win some. Mm. People get these illusions that, hey, man, it's going to set everything straight. Mm. And maybe it has for some, but, but don't always think that's the case. Let me yeah. read a, a couple instances here. Uh, Callie Rogers won a British lottery paying the equivalent of about $3 million U.S. at the tender and vulnerable age of 16. She bought homes for family members, but also burned untold thousands on vacations, clothes, and cars, and over 360000 on cocaine. She's attempted suicide three times, found once with bleeding wrists by her drug dealer. I mean, l tragedies. Listen to this one. Uh, this, this is um, uh, Andrew Jack Whitaker. This mm. guy was, he won one of the biggest winnings for an individual, $314 million. It says, uh, 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 he won the Powerball on a Christmas of 2002, $314 million. The West Virginia, uh, Virginian had won the biggest undivided jackpot lottery history. A do-gooder and instant celebrity easily recognized in his ever-present black duds and cowboy hat. Jack hired three people just to open the letters begging him for money. Of the $113 million he took home, Jack gave away $14 million and spent at least another $45 million on his own. Jack also lost money to thieves and cons, but his greatest losses were more deeply personal. His drug-addled granddaughter, Brandy, who had also been pursued for the fortune of her papa, died in 2004 at age 17. His daughter, Ginger, mother to Brandy, died in 2009. Whitaker has also been sued by Caesars Casino in Atlantic City for bouncing $1.5 million in checks to cover gambling losses. So here's the guy, $314 million. And there's the guy in, in Florida, as soon as he won, his girlfriend murdered him for the money. All right, yeah, that was one on here too as well. I stole it. So, you know, folks, please, let's keep a proper perspective on this, and let, let's approach this whole subject carefully. Wherever you land on the spectrum, Make sure that you really seek God on it and are cautious because there's a lot of vice uh, involved with it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to move on to our video from our episode, The Greatest Gamble. Let's roll it. 
So what is the biggest gamble? I mean, what are the highest stakes? What would be the biggest gamble you could ever take? Changing careers. What about betting your life? Would you ever bet your life? I mean, would you, for $10 million, play Russian roulette with one bullet and a six-shooter? $10 million. Why not? Because it's your life. So you value your life? I value my life. So for $10 million for your mom, you might you might play that game of Russian roulette? Maybe I might play that game for All right, you. We, we got a gift for you. All right, here we go. We got 10 million bucks, and we have uh, the six shooter in there. So you want to go ahead and do it? Yes, I would. Oh. You would. All right, your turn's next. I, I, I couldn't do it. No. I know we in the right mind would. Would you ever gamble your life? No. 10 million dollars? No. Would no. You play Russian roulette for 10 million dollars? No. No, 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 no. Would you ever do it? I wouldn't do it for the 10 million dollars. You wouldn't do it? No. I mean, do it? I'd do it, but I wouldn't do it for the money. I'd just do it for, like, to say I did it, you know? Really? Yeah. Bring me the I know money! I about money. <laughs> oh, you really want me to do it? Would you put that to your head just for fun? Yeah. You would not. <laughs> this is, like, intimidating. Would you take the chance and risk your life for $20 million? And you got to, so you got a, you got a five out of six chance of being okay. <laughs> Would you really? Maybe. Five out of six? A lot of money. Five out of six? All right. I have a special present for you. There we go. Mm. Okay. How about that? So, here we go. That's a whole lot of money. That is a lot of money. And there's our, and there's our revolver. Now, now so which one of you wants to do this first? Go ahead, Chris. Hold on. Okay, I'll do it. Go for it. No, you're not going to do that. It's a lot of money. Yeah, but your life? You're gonna gamble your life on that? How old are you? 18. 18? You got your whole life ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, no, you wouldn't do that, right? I mean, be honest. Okay, no. Would you put your life on the line for 20 million? I would not put my life on the line for 20 million dollars. Why not? Because that's, <laughs> my life's worth a lot more than that, I think. Nick, you said to me that you would play Russian roulette for 10 million dollars. I probably, yes, sir. So, if there's one bullet in a cylinder, Six shots, one bullet. I got a five to one chance. I'd probably do it, yeah. Give it to me. You would really try it. Let's do it. Ten million dollars. You want me to do it? You want to try it? Yeah, let's do it. So what is the biggest gamble? I mean, what are the highest stakes? It is to say there is no hell. And if you're wrong and you go there, you're going to lose your most prized possession. You're going to lose your very soul. So those are clips taken from The Greatest Gamble, which was season three of our TV show. And you can purchase these at livingwaters.com. They're $1.50 a piece when you purchase 10 or more. They're very evangelistic. They're easy to hand out. And you'll be surprised at what else is on that DVD and what people are willing to do for money. Wonderful. Well, as promised, we are going to give you a weekend update. But, Ray, do you want to jump into the video so then we... Just jump into the video, but you had a great time. Okay, let's show the video. <laughs> well, we've just arrived at Hunting the Beach and uh, something exciting going on. It's a kite festival. So, Scotty, we have a good time today, huh? Yeah, look at that. A dog and puppies. I can see the dog and puppies up there. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, that's interesting. I'd like to... Have a big kite with 180movie.com written on it. So, let's see what happens today. Well, here's something that's really interesting. This guy's name is Mike. Uh, he's an evolutionist, an atheist who uh, we've just spent probably 40 to 50 minutes uh, back and forthing about evolution and the gospel and God's existence. But he just told me he came all the way from Tucson, Arizona. Now, just to engage me in, uh, like in a debate. So uh, I'll give them over to Scotty. Scotty's uh, more intelligent when it comes to evolution than me. But I am learning. So this is Mike from Tucson. So make sure you pray for him. This is, this is interesting. This is uh, one of the safest friends. is going to interview me about um, 180. You're going to ask me some questions about 180? Uh, yes. Let me just get my uh, camera. 
camera set up. Can you give me the first question now so we can just uh, get a little idea of what you're going to ask? Um, if it's okay, I would just like to have it so we both have the, uh, the same. Let me just get the camera going. Okay, that's great. Nothing personal, I just want to make sure we both... Uh... I look forward to it. Come around the side, oh, yeah, so the Bible is... So Matthew, why, you, why did you come over to Huntington Beach? Mike. Mike, sorry, I just talked to Matthew, your buddy. How's it going? Yeah. So why did you come over here? Well, I came all the way here from Tucson. I took a really nightmarish train ride just to be with my best friend, and we could both come down and talk to you, Ray. And you're an atheist? Yes, sir. I hope that you're going to backslide. Right. Well, it's good, good meeting you again, sir. Great uh, meeting you. Tucson says hi. Okay, thanks, man. God bless you. That's cool. And there's today's dog. Hey, doggy. You having a good drink there, huh? Oh boy, he's into that. Look at that. Hello. Oh, good dog. He stopped to say hello. Dogs are so cool. Oh, and there's another dog. And how are you doing? You having a good time today? Huh? What's his name? Her name's Molly. Her. Hi, Molly. Ray, this is a this is a girl. Hello. This is a girl, is a girl that I had in my youth group back. I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm embarrassed to admit I'm an old guy, but this was one of the girls I had as a youth group when I was doing youth ministry. So she came to see me out here because she knew I was going to come see you. Oh, and that's so good. She's got a child now. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, I met you guys before. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Well. Nice to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Now, Ray, I thought that the whole dog thing was dealt with with the dog and the kite. I thought, okay, that no, 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 no. I, I just, you got two this well, time. It's hunting the beach dogs. That's what I go there for. And uh, then I preach the gospel on the side. That's awesome. So it went good. You had an atheist come out and see you. you two had, atheists. You had I other Christians. The interview come out. with the atheist. Lots of Christians showed up. It was a great time. We're very oh, encouraged. That's awesome. Mm. Very cool. Well, as always, uh, this Friday, uh, Mark and I took uh, the evangelism team out from Kindred. And uh, as we said on Friday, we usually go to the mall when it rains or it's cold weather. Mm. So we always have a place to go. And what a phenomenal time. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was really great. Everyone had great encounters. I was witnessing to two young men, uh, and I was talking to one in particular. One was sitting down. I think his girlfriend was with him. And when I wrapped up talking to the guy I was uh, you know, talking to standing up, the guy sitting down stands up, and he goes, I just heard everything you said on a movie. I go, really? He goes, yeah, someone was outside my high school handing out DVDs. And, uh, and I, I sat at home and I watched this. I was eating my lunch. And I was watching it. He was getting into it. So, and he said, yeah, it's about Hitler and abortion. He said, man, it really got me thinking about abortion. Wow. I said, you know what? This was no accident. This is divine. God, oh, God set this up to get your attention again. You need to show it to your friends. He's all, yeah, I still have it at home. I'm going to do that. You know? <laughs> it was great. Uh, my girls witnessed uh, five or six Mormon girls as well. Had oh, a great wow. encounter there. That's and, wonderful. And it was just a really fruitful time. So uh, very neat. And we encourage you to get out there too. And preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's what this program is about. Make sure to look us up on Facebook. Uh, race page is still going hot and strong. And uh, we still got ours going. So look Mark Spence up. Look myself up on Facebook. And check us out at uh, onthebox.us. So thanks for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. God bless you. We'll see you then. For questions about On The Box with Ray Comfort or to submit questions for future shows, please email onthebox at livingwaters.com. That's onthebox at livingwaters.com. On The Box with Ray Comfort is an outreach of Living Waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel.